hello, my name's uh, Dr. Claire Bates and I work at an organisation called Voice Support. Uh, we are an organisation that supports adults with learning disabilities, autistic adults and um, adults experiencing poor mental health. So I've been funded um, by uh, our, uh, ARC KSS and I'm going to talk about um, my research journey so far. So I'll talk a little bit about my journey to research. Um, I joined Choice Support as a support worker in 2002, which was when I left university. And I started working with people with a learning disability. Um, I progressed. I was going to be doing this while I um, did my master's. Ended up taking a year out of that and become our outreach manager in London. So managing a relatively sizable um, outreach service with um, two properties. I then moved on. Uh, I then went back to university to be uh, to do an MSc in therapeutic counselling and was a bank worker throughout my uh, MSc. I then decided I wanted a career in, in research um, and took a job as a quality analyst within Choice Support, um, using my analytical research skills to develop um, our quality monitoring systems and conducting audits, looking at quality across services um, based on. Um, quality of life outcomes and meeting CQC criteria. Um, I was really lucky that during that time, um, um, I was from 2009 onwards, I was funded um, to do a PhD from Choice Support alongside my quality analyst work. Um, I was really lucky. Um, I thought about a topic. As I said, I, I tell the story quite a lot. I just got married. Um, and I was uh, did a lot of audits. So I did a lot of audits internally within Choice Support. We're a large organisation. At the time, we supported about a thousand people with a learning disability. I think it's close to three thousand now. Um, it's a lot of people nationally. Um, and I used to do a lot of external auditing as well. So I used to meet hundreds of people with a learning disability. And what I realised was that there was very few people in long term relationships. Um, either in marriages or living together, having children, sort of a real shared, deep, meaningful relationship. And I wondered why that was why that was the case. Um, so my research looked at the partner selection for people with a learning disability, um, but it sort of developed more into looking at um, the barriers um, and facilitators surrounding relationships. And what I found was that um, good support was vital to relationships. But I'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, in 2014, I finished my PhD, uh, completed part time alongside my analyst work at Choice Support. Um, and I was um, very, very lucky to be seconded um, to the University of Kent. Choice Support funded that for me um, to go and work at the University of Kent at the Tizard Centre, the Centre for Excellence for Learning Disability and Autism Research in, in Kent, uh, where many of my um, colleagues and supervisors and, and senior managers at Choice Support had gone to um, do um, research to support their role. So I was working there um, uh, one day a week alongside my quality analyst role. Um, during that time, I was um, conducting research, predominantly working on um, projects relating to my quality analyst role at the time. So I was looking at, I looked at breastfeeding and mental capacity um, for people, women with a learning disability, and I also worked on um, other people's projects, looking at projects around domestic violence and people with a learning disability, and um, working on some small-scale projects of my own, uh, looking at um, bisexuality among people with a learning disability. Uh, I continued doing that role for some time, as I said, and, and then in 2017, it took me a little while to... to Put the PhD behind me and to think about um, looking at it again. Uh, published several articles looking at my findings of my PhD, um, and and I'll I'll talk a little bit more about supported loving in a minute. But the main the main finding of my PhD was that um, without good support, relationships with a learned disability, people with a learned disability just didn't happen. Um, so I wanted to uh, launch a little social media campaign to raise awareness my findings and how important research was we set up some, um, some blogs um, from people sort of fundamental to sort of supporting relationships and and family members and, and people with a learning disability and we, we launched supported loving uh, it was a little social media campaign on twitter um, with a blog and within 
a few days um we had been contacted by radio uh channel 4 news and um were done as, a, as an interview there we spoke to john snow and um, spoke about what we were trying to do around raising awareness and sharing our findings um and really from there supported loving has just really grown and i'll talk about that more on the next slide um I continue to do research uh, into this area. As I said, uh, so sort of between 2017 and 2020, I worked on a large project at the University of Kent where I was a, a co-researcher um, looking at specifically, we called it the Love Project, look at head by uh, Professor Michelle McCarthy. We were looking at the kind of support people needed around relationships and uh, to help them succeed, which sort of led on from my PhD um, and work Michelle had done. And we spoke to 40 people with a learning disability, it was funded by an HR. Um, we looked at um, parents, or support parents, gave them parents' views and staff um, and specialist dating agencies for adults with learning disabilities. So we looked at the whole spectrum. Um, I'm still only working at this point one day a week on this. Um, I'm still working as an analyst up until 2020. Um, so I'm doing this alongside my role, um, often condensing sort of a week's worth of work into um, four days and um, doing this one day a week uh, and also yes continuing my own research looking at um, unfunded research looking at bisexuality among people with a learning disability also some other little projects there looking at vegetarianism and um, meat-free diets among people with a learning disability um, which is another passion of mine um, I made an, un an unsuccessful bid to NIHR for a, for a hundred thousand pounds um, to look at um, support for autistic people around sexuality and relationships, which I'll talk about more on the next slide. Um, uh, but I was unsuccessful, got two really high scores, but was unsuccessful with one low score um, for that for that that bid. Um, so then I amended that and applied for, for the funding. This project is about um, ARCKS funding, um, and I was successful um, in the um, future leaders um future leaders fund so that that'll be the research that i'm talking about today um and the autistic loving study which is what we've called it so what is it what is my project what is the project i'm here talking about today um i realized that a lot of research um for people uh, autistic people it's often said in the same sentence as autistic people and people with a learning disability and what I know from my work, um, working with autistic people in choice support and by supported loving and people that I've known in my personal life is that the needs um, that autistic people have around support, around relationships and sexuality are often quite different to that of people with a learning disability. However, there's very minimal research to actually looking at this in any kind of there's there's no research that looks at the support people need in any kind of detail um so so that is that's what my project was for um we've just started i have an autistic um research assistant and we yesterday recruited our advisory group of autistic people um and they will be helping me shape and develop the research we will be interviewing um autistic people about what support do they need from social care staff if they're already in relationships um what's if they're not in relationships what support might they need to develop them and what broader social care support do they feel they need relating to sexuality so we're going to look at the challenges that they face um what support would they like from their social care staff or what support maybe would they like their social care staff to help them access um, we're not sure yet obviously that's what we're, the research will be about and our findings are going to be used to develop a training course for staff and supporting autistic people around sexuality and relationships and that will be um, a peer-led advisory group with an autistic researcher helping to shape and ensure that we meet the needs of the group that we are um, we're researching so um, we're, we're looking there's nothing currently available really for staff working purely with autistic people and we're aware that there's quite a lot out there for staff working um, with people with a learning disability and older adults as well um, in this topic area but very little looking at the needs um, of autistic people without a learning disability. So that was what my funding is for. Um, what has helped me on my research journey? Uh, caring a lot about what I was researching. Um, I spent a lot of time working on this in my own time. Um, as I said, I did this alongside my main role. Um, so I did a lot of this um, in my own time. So it had to be something that I cared a lot about. So obviously relationships are very important in everyone's lives. 
Um, so I was really clear to pick something I cared about. Um, another enabler to my research journey was that I had a really supportive organisation. Um, my company really did see the value in developing research um, and using it to promote best practice in social care. Um, the investment in me and the investment in support is loving. So we're a national network with over a thousand members and we've been working nationally with organisations like the Care Quality Commission, Skills for Care and Department of Health and Social Care. And we've been able to um, have an, a national impact and be seen as like leaders in this area. So it's been a real investment for my company. You know, I'm, I, my role, it hasn't been a lot fun one day a week for me um, because I did continue until 2020 doing this alongside my main role now the money that I bring in by supported loving has enabled me to 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 and research bids has allowed me to um to step away from that and work full time in this role um having experienced mentors so as a social care charity we don't really have expertise in academic research um so I worked initially on unpaid projects with the University of Kent to gain experience and skills um, so it's a Professor Michelle McCarthy has been really fundamental to my work there, um, but also just having the expertise and the background and being involved in the University of Kent, attending study days, um, seminars, lectures. Um, you know, I was paid, but that wasn't a funded post. Um, Choice funded that for me, um, but it gave me um, it gave expertise that the social care charity I worked with didn't have. So making good links to um, a university. Um, I was able to access various um, contacts and networks via choice support. So I had already an audience to talk about my research to. So I was already part of organisations like VODG, which is like the voluntary sector organisation disability group um, that lots of social care staff were part of, links to Learn Disability England. Um, I had relationships. I recently done a project looking at mental health, so I have links to that through my line manager of two networks in, involved in social care. So I was able to bridge the gap between academia and research, um, academia and, and practice quite well by using um, both networks that I had made through research and via um, my role. And and also that having a dual role was really helpful for me because I um, I had a social care background. So social care staff took me seriously when I was talking because they knew that I'd been working in this field for nearly 20 years. Um, and, and I had a lot of practical experience working day to day with adults with um, support needs. But I also have a PhD and an academic background. So um, that allowed me to, to, I think it gave out, loving credibility and I'll explain about that you know it's all based on supported loving and all the stuff that we do is based on academic research so it's not just some organization saying what they think it's actually proper peer review published international journal some of them research um yeah so it was you know it's been able to have like a dual role understanding the pressures of social care understanding the realities of it but also um having some credibility with a, an academic um, background as well barriers what's been the barriers at uh, time obviously the biggest thing has been time um my organization have been really supportive allowing me to work alongside my role um but it's been time um getting this funding bid was really helpful for me particularly because it allowed me to employ a research assistant a fantastic research assistant who called rose who is helping me with this current project because i just wouldn't be able to manage running a national network conducting a research study um all on my own um so it, it's been um, really really helpful um but time has been the biggest thing um obviously everything takes so long um ethics applications i talk about a bit further down you know funding bids you know they all take a lot of time and i just think you know really i, I had to really stress to my employers just how long these things take and 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 that, that i'm going as quick as i can for something Coping with disappointment, um, that was really hard for me. My first NIHR bid, I was really gutted for the hundreds of big scale projects that I didn't get the funding. Um, and I'd also made two funding bids to the tampon tax of over a million um, for non-research but related to developing supported loving's network and the capacity, which would allow me to have done more research-based stuff as well. Um, but unfortunately, I didn't get them. So it was feeling and wanting to give up and um, coping with sort of negative feedback was quite a challenge 
Um, and I've had to just keep going. And I did get as a, a, a clearly I did get a, a, a grant in the end, but it was you know it was it was quite a hard um, quite a hard process. Um, I said ethics probably the most difficult part was the system. Everyone had warned me that the form and the IRS was 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 a was a nightmare. Um, I don't think I quite appreciate how long not completing the form, but just the actual system was going to take me to get to use. And I gave my feedback on that. Didn't think it was easy. Um, and I'm not a silly technophobe, but I found it quite a, a complicated process. But the actual ethics committee was fine. Um, didn't have any struggles there. Got through quite easily. Um, so yeah, but it was a, it was helpful to have had support to complete that from. And my mentor at, at, at the University of Kent, Michelle, um, and, and through, through the funding, um, it was helpful to have support. And I definitely think people should ask for help around that because I found it probably the most stressful part of the whole process. Um, having to scale down my project. Um, so I had a, initially made a big funding bid. I had to scale that back. So it's quite sad to have to lose parts of it, um, but still retain the, the, the essence to fit the budget. Um, but I'm not going to let that put me off. Hopefully, I'm going to be doing that, uh, make a bigger bid in the future to, to do the stuff that I had originally wanted. Um, and then the last thing was recruiting participants. I've <laughs> always the case. Um, I haven't started recruiting participants yet. I've just recruited the advisory group, um, which was actually relatively painless. Um, but recruiting participants in social care is always difficult, um, very challenging in terms of the so the, the I get hundreds of applicators, uh, people sending me research through supported loving, people want to apply. Um, and it's really difficult because, yeah, it, because it's really hard. Um, everyone wants um, someone to, to think their project is number one priority. And, and I found a real thing, barriers get over that is to call people, to actually not just send emails, to call, just to actually call people that might be able to help you and use all your networks. Right out of time. Um, so what I managed to do with my research, unfunded, so unfunded, would love in now um i use my research my phd and research that i've done at tizard alongside uh, unfunded just funded by my organization one day a week um i run supported loving we now have about uh, three thousand followers on twitter about 800 members of our facebook group really active all giving advice to people around sex and relationships and social care i monitor that we've got over 1500 members of supported loving network we have a toolkit that's been made by free by all our members um, who have expertise in that field. They get to they get to talk about their work. They get to share their page for free um, and get promoted. We have a day uh, every week. We share a different page and make a big fuss about people that are contributed. And we hold webinars that are free for anyone to attend on monthly topics. Again, people can talk about their work, share what they're doing, um, and cover all areas of sex and relationships. We have a weekly newsletter. Um, we've managed to talk about my research. I've, we've been on BBC Channel 4 News. We've been on Channel 4 News. We were on a Radio 4 documentary. We were on BBC Breakfast talking about it. We've been in the mail on Sunday. Um, I, it was only a very small part of me just briefly talking about it. And we were the focus of a Guardian article that was written about the work we're doing in our campaign um, to, to you know, change views on relationships and, and, and have them as a, seen as a fundamental part of social care support. We were, um, I was part of an, a BBC Ouch podcast talking about um, LGBTQ plus people and the support that they need. And I was really lucky to have edited a book with Pavilion um, using members of um, the Supported Loving Net, many members of the Supported Loving Network. So this was all done unfunded. This was all part of, um, this has all been done um, pretty much unfunded. Um, and we've been influencing national practice. So we consulted on and we contributed to CQC's guidance, first guidance they've ever written on um, relationships and sexuality and social care. We contributed to their seminal report around promoting sexual safety for empowerment, really stressing, obviously, a need to keep people safe, but real importance around promoting relationships. And we reviewed and rewrote skills for care, supporting personal relationships guidance for social care staff. We've been working with skills for care CQC and the Department of Health and Social Care on conducting a large review of learning materials as part of a project um, and um, it's been made into a database by CQC where we looked at all um, resources available to staff in this area to help people and we reviewed them all, wrote it up into a report and a, and a database and we're developing and piloting a universal training pack for social care staff. Now this is funded by, by these organisations um, but that was done off the back of um, 
momentum and the work we've done at Supported Loving, and our base, which was all based around my PhD findings. So it's been a really busy time. Um, I'm going to stop there talking because I've probably gone slightly over, um, but thank you very much for listening. So that was my research journey. Um, 